every horror film fan should watch at least once. Yeah. Get it under your belt, <laughs> yeah. and you're good. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking some local brews. Yep. I am drinking Dastardly Villains... Ugh. Infernal Fusion Machine Black <laughs> Ale. That's, what, a, that's a mouthful. What does that even mean? Infernal Fusion? What the fuck is a fusion machine? What are you getting fused with? The fly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brundle fly when you're done drinking this beer. You all slowly, you're all melting and everything. At least your ear all falls off. Today we're going to bring to you 1976's Blood Sucking Freaks. And this was a Patreon request by Rob Robinson. This movie was directed by Joel M. Reed. And he did Night of the Zombies, just to mention one movie. That's about all. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> Blood Sucking Freaks starts off with a bunch of people in the audience. Not too many people in the audience, mind you. Like yeah. a handful of people <laughs> in some weird theater watching Sardou's Theater of the Macabre. And it's like a... S&M type performance where you're watching basically people get tortured and stuff. But the people in the audience think it's just a show. It's all illusion. It's, it's magic, basically. Sardou comes on and then, you know, this woman is all naked comes on. Of course. They start doing all the sick stuff, like putting your finger in a vice and turning it and you and hear the sound. Everyone's all, <laughs> all clapping, thinking it's a big show. They put this weird mechanism on another woman's head and start like, <laughs> tightening it and start <laughs> ratcheting. <laughs> the grand finale, they bring this other naked woman out and they strap her hand to like this table. Little guy with like a afro comes yeah, in and that Peter Dinklage, Bob Ross, <laughs> hybrid guy, <laughs> yeah. comes in and starts sawing this woman's hand off. <laughs> At the end of the show, you know, all the critics are leaving and donation for the actors. The actors are not paid. <laughs> yeah, damn right you don't get paid. <laughs> yeah, fuck. So he runs his one critic's leaving and the critic basically tells him, I'm never going to review this show, but it's awful. It's garbage. Another couple comes through, some guy and his nice looking girlfriend who's like a ballerina and they kind of like the show. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, I kind of like what you're doing here, you know? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> backstage behind Sardou's Theater of the Macabre and you realize that it isn't theater. It's yeah. not an illusion. This is all real. He's got this cage of women in his dungeon and he's like <laughs> keeping there all naked and throwing this meat to yeah, them. Yeah, raw meat. He's all having dinner with, on, on some naked woman's back and everything. And she's got this candle that's spilling all this wax on her back. So, oh. Don't ruin my dinner! Yeah. <laughs> Have you been a bad boy, master? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and all these women come in and start ripping his clothes off and start whipping yeah. him. And all... <laughs> 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 So he's pretty pissed off that this critic won't review the show, so he tells that little guy... <laughs> Bob Ross? The little, little Bob Ross, go get this guy, go kidnap him. Take him down to the dungeon and string him up. <laughs> yeah, start, start giving him the boots, literally. Yeah. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Thrown into this weird fucking world. Yeah. <laughs> turns out that Sardu is getting paid millions of dollars to kidnap women and traffic them to other countries, right? Because this guy, who's in Alice Sweet Alice, that shitty landlord yeah. guy, Sardu also gets the idea to kidnap that ballerina who came with her boyfriend to watch the show in the beginning. They want to break her. They want to break her spirit to get her to star in their next show. And the way they're gonna do that is by torturing other people to make her uncomfortable and break her. One of the things that they do, they're like, bring in the doctor. And so they have this woman tied to this chair, 
And this doctor basically, he's like, he's all fucked up too. He's like, uh, I live with my mother. And all this is like, <laughs> he's all making them all sick already. <laughs> like, he starts pulling out all the woman's teeth, drilling into the top of her head, and he puts a straw down and starts drinking her fucking brains. Like, <laughs> That's holy <crazy>. fuck. <laughs> but it's even to the point where it's like, Sardu and Bob Ross get rid of him. Please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get rid of that doctor guy too. He's just he's even too much for them. <laughs> the ballerina Natasha, her boyfriend starts to get a little worried about her and realizes something's wrong. And so he phones the cops, Detective Tucci, and he comes down and basically he gives him the facts of life. Yeah. Like Nothing's gonna happen here unless you grease the wheels of justice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking for your girlfriend unless you pay me ten grand. <laughs> yeah. Fucking asshole. But this is the way the world really works, right? And so he pays him. He has to. He has no yeah. choice. And so they start looking into Sardu and they start going down to his theater of the macabre to investigate and find out what the fuck they're really doing and where Natasha is. Sardu comes out to meet them, and they're asking where Natasha is, and he's like, oh, well, she can't be disturbed right now, but they insist, you know, so he does bring her out, and by this point, she is so brainwashed and fucked up that she just kind of goes along with it and says, well, everything's fine, and I have a show to do. They just kind of go into the audience and start to watch the show. Sardu, he all has that critic guy all tied Ch chained up. up and everything. <laughs> yeah. And they start to watch. And that's where we're going to end it. So if you want to see what happens to the critic, Natasha, Sardu, and all his fucking lot, <laughs> keep watching 1976's Blood Sucking Freaks. Blood Sucking <laughs> Freaks, man. What a trip. <laughs> this movie's a trip and a fucking half. It is basically exploitation film, almost at its best. Nudity, the torture, the gore, but it also has some things to say about society. Right, Which yeah. is kind of what makes it maybe a bit of a cut above the rest. Yeah, yeah, it's actually an extremely smart movie when you start to delve into all the things that it's touching on. Human trafficking, which just now, recently, we're starting to hear lots about that, right? But yeah. that was never, there was never a thing back then that was touched upon. Human trafficking, people being kidnapped and then used and, and sold. sold. Yeah, it happened, but no one talked about it. Artists, right? Struggling artists putting on a show and then critics tearing things to pieces or not even wanting to touch yeah. your show. Pissing the artists off, too, to the point where you want to get your revenge, right? On the credit. Yeah. yeah, everybody wants to do that. Yeah. It touches on a lot of real-life situations. It does. Corruption. Yeah. With the law. This movie is basically all about corruption. Everyone in this movie is corrupt yeah. to a degree. Yeah. And everything is corrupt. Yeah. For a low-budget movie like this, a low-budget exploitation movie, the acting is pretty damn good. Everyone is solid in this movie. Like Sardu is great. Yeah. Like everyone is really good. Yeah. I believe everything in it. To the point where you're kind of like when the women are being tortured and stuff, it's like you're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So that's how good and believable it really is. That's right. Yeah. And the characters that the actors play are fucking great too. The way the movie is set up, you kind of start to hate all of these fucking characters too, right? Like, these fucking assholes, what are they doing to these women? You don't like any of them. Not really. Not even the detective, you know? But the way the movie progresses, you start to get almost comfortable with what's going on. Yeah. And then you start to just be okay yeah, with, with it. things. It, which is interesting. Yeah. How they kind of desensitize you. Yeah, and you start to, like, yeah. almost not sympathize, but you, you're just okay with it. Yeah. yeah, the comedy in this movie, it's one of those movies like it starts off like as the darkest dark comedy you'll ever watch in your life. Because yeah. I think at its heart the movie is a dark comedy, mm -hmm. really. But then it gets to a point where it's like, oh, <laughs> is this a comedy? Like The laughs the, kind of end. The, the kind of, it gets to a point where it's pretty intense Yeah, with the torture and stuff and it's like, 
<laughs> the doctor scene did it for me. Like, that guy was fucked. Even on their level, yeah. that guy was screwed up. And that's where I started to kind of, it's like, it's no longer fun funny, anymore. Yeah, yeah funny, yeah. you know. And the scene that got me, it was the scene where they put the woman in the guillotine and they make her hold the rope for the blade in her yeah. teeth. And they start caning her bare ass. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, whoa, that's fucked up. Yeah. And she lets go. And then some dummy head comes yeah. off, and you're like, oh, it gets all fun again, right? But it's one of those movies that kind of really rides the line between fun and r fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, it's just black and white. Yeah. There's almost no gray in this movie at all, right? They feed you a lot of masochistic shit, then they pull back. Yeah. So you get comfortable, then they feed you more. The intensity of everything keeps ramping up, yeah. though, yeah. as the movie plays yeah, it's on. it's pretty crazy. Like, it was at the point where I thought, is this movie going to be nothing but women being tortured? Then it pulled it back, and it's like, yeah. okay, now it's into the investigation with the boyfriend. And they gave you a break almost just when you needed one. Exactly, yeah. For some people, maybe before. Like, you know, too late. Too late. Maybe? Yeah. But for me, it was just like, okay, thank you. I needed a break from that sick torture shit. The effects uh, and the torture scenes are really actually quite good in this movie for the type of movie that it is. Very low budget. Low budget, low yeah. production value. But the effects aren't so good where you're like disgusted. Yeah. Because it's low budget, it's not super realistic. The blood is really red, like that, that paint, paint. <laughs> that paint blood that we all know from the 70s. So when you see that, it takes you out of it a little bit. But for I think, and that's good. The cheesiness of the effect makes it a bit more comical. That's right. As opposed to being just plain disgusted by it. Yeah, yeah. The sound effects that they use too, oh. like a lot of those ratcheting yeah. sounds. <laughs> And then the screaming and the blood curve. It's a lot of this, most of the soundtrack to this movie is women screaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it gets to you after a while, like, oh man, like I think it's done on, on purpose. On purpose, right? yeah. And it serves its it serves its purpose, mm -hmm. right? Rob, man, you're fucking <laughs> you're making me watch some sick shit. Yeah. But you know, at the end of it, it's kind of farcical too. The movie's one big farce. Yeah. The movie is one big black dark comedy, but it 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 has so much torture in it where it makes you question whether it is a comedy or not. Yeah. It's a weird movie in that way. It balances the scales throughout the movie. Comedy, sick shit, comedy, <laughs> you know, it's like I think it throughout the whole movie it does this. I think it does it perfectly. And it really does it perfectly cuz yeah. it doesn't tip the scales in either way too far. Yeah. Where you're always questioning, what is this movie? Yeah. I what think is it? Is it a comedy? Is it a horror? Is it a snuff film? Is it exploitation? Yeah. I, it's br I think the movie is brilliant, actually. It is. It is really brilliant because it does all that. And yeah. And it gets a real world message across at yeah. the same fucking time. And it gives the viewer an effect. Like, it makes the viewer feel something. Yeah. Whatever it is, whether it's disgust, or it's you know, lust or whatever it's <laughs> yeah, like it whatever. makes you feel something it's like you watch this movie and you're gonna come out with some sort of opinion or feeling mm -hmm. as yeah. opposed to just be like yeah uh, i watched the movie like h2o yeah <laughs> yeah it's, exactly the com complete opposite of h2o and the ending is like crazy the yeah. ending of this movie it's is like even... what the hell is like that holy... sardu is all getting like even more crazy, he's all making out with that dead, the corpse of that <laughs> critic? Like, oh, <laughs> like what the fuck is going on? Man, it's a, it's a fucking trip. Yeah, this movie is a trip. It may not be for everybody, but it's a, I think it's a movie that every horror film fan should watch at least once. Yeah. Get it under your belt, <laughs> yeah. and you're good. So if you want a borderline snuff style movie that rides the line between sadomasochism, real world 
situations, then watch 1976's Blood Sucking Freaks. It's a fucking roller coaster ride. It'll take you to the lowest of the lows, to the highest of the highs, and it has something to say, which not every movie can do. Yeah, and actually, the things that this movie has to say in 1976 are still things we can talk about today because nothing has changed. <laughs> exactly. As far as human trafficking, corruption in the police department, it's all the same. Yeah. All these years later. That's right. And until next time, keep drinking. And whipping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>